Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi everybody, we're back. This is theCUBE, we're live here, day three of HPE Discover 2016. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome back Patrick Osborne. Patrick, you know, long time uh, CUBE guest, CUBE alum, saxophone player. We'll, we'll Can't get enough. We'll talk about that a little bit. <laughs> and he's joined by Michael Lindsay, who's assistant architect at RNDC out of Atlanta. Welcome to theCUBE, great Thank to you. have you on. Yeah, you like Lenny Pickett? Love Lenny yeah. Pickett, he's I, a, like the original, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. Tower of Power fan. He's on Saturday Night he's the saxophone player on Saturday Night Live, he's runs a, the band. big inspiration, yeah, he's good. Yeah, awesome. Okay, well let's start with Michael, because Patrick, we talk all the time, but so. <laughs> so Michael, tell us a little bit about RNDC. What do, you, what do you guys do? You're a liquor distributor, but tell us more about your business. Uh, RNDC is the second largest liquor distributor in the country. Uh, we're across uh, 20, 22 states. I can't remember the exact number. Um, we've grown over uh, mergers and acquisitions. Started out as an East Coast uh, primary uh, organization and, and kind of spread out from there. Um, we run the gamut of HP products. We, we started out as an old deck uh, customer, went to Compaq, followed uh, Compaq over to HP, and uh, have been going strong. So, uh, do they still sell Billy Beer? <laughs> you no. guys are probably too young to remember what that is. <laughs> I know what that is. Okay. <laughs> Jimmy Carter's brother used to have a beer for those <laughs> young people in the audience that don't know what I'm talking about. And, uh, so, your role as a systems architect is basically to architect the entire infrastructure, or are you mostly focus on storage? Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, I architect the entire infrastructure, uh, anything aside from networks okay. uh, and wireless communications. Uh, so storage, servers, um, virtualized systems, hyperconverged systems, backup and recovery, uh, BCDR, uh, remote, remote office, that's, that's all under me. So paint a picture of, of what your operation looks like. You know, uh, infrastructure. So, so we, have a, we have a primary data center in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we have a secondary data center uh, for disaster recovery in Houston, Texas. And then we have uh, remote offices all over the place, sales offices as well as warehousing offices that run uh, local systems, file services, uh, domain services, uh, some SQL services for the warehouse systems there. And, and and the apps that you're running, maybe talk about those a little bit. Are they custom? Are they off the shelf, packaged? You run Oracle database? Uh, a, a lot of stuff that we have is, is custom. Uh, one of our primary um, order to cache systems that we have currently is on OpenVMS, written in Dybal, which is a very old language. Uh, it's Remember. a COBOL derivative. Yeah. Uh, we actually own the source code for that product because the company has been out of business for so long. So we have quite a few developers that have learned that, that language and right now we are, we are bringing in younger people and teaching them that die ball code uh, to continue to program on that. So people might think, wow, why are you doing that? It might be crazy because the, it's adding value to your business and to convert off of that it's <laughs> very expensive. would be and insane. It, and, and we are actually getting ready to uh, ramp up conversion to get off of that system as well as get off three other uh, order to cash systems oh, okay. that we have. So you, uh, we just recently uh, signed a contract with Oracle uh, and have brought in Superdome X into the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to be running, running everything off of Oracle EBS and SOA Suite uh, for an integration bus and real-time processing. So we have about a five to seven year project to do that. Okay. That could be another 20 minute conversation, so we'll <laughs> right. just stay away from that. Um, and the storage infrastructure that's supporting these apps is consistent or is it a bunch of stovepipes? How does it, how it's, does it work? Uh, for me, not for, to be pejorative, but that's for kind me of the it's way consistent. It's yeah. HPE. Yeah, okay. um, our, our tier one storage is uh, XPP9500. Okay. Uh, our tier two storage is 3PAR7400. So we we just got into 3PAR two years ago. Uh, we came from an EMA system years back when we were running alpha processors. Um, moved to an EVA, outgrew the EVA, and uh, decided we needed something that was a little bit more stable and and rock solid for replication and went to the P9500. Okay, um, so this, you hear a lot of talk about you know, software defined, maybe Patrick, you could talk a little bit about that. Sure. You guys are, you know, your big messaging this week is all flash data center and then the whole fabric, you know, software defined piece. Yep. 
give us the update on what you guys are talking about at the show, what the reaction has been with, yeah. with customers? So we have a, a number of customers like uh, Michael who, you know, you have your, your core IT, right? And you're using technologies like All Flash to take cost out, accelerate, you know, the, the, the performance of those applications uh, regardless of their sort of legacy apps or if you're moving to Oracle, but that's a, you know, core IT that we're looking to accelerate with 3PAR and All Flash. Um, for a lot of customers uh, like RNDC, they've grown through acquisition. You've got a ton of um, IT operations that are outside of your core data center. So we're really trying to help customers take cost out in those areas and also drive simplicity. So Michael had started a journey with using our store virtual technology, right? So bringing store virtual, which is a, a software defined storage layer, putting that on servers for the purposes of putting a number of workloads on there that I wouldn't say they're you know, tier one workloads, but they're pretty important, right? Right. So file services, print, some SQL, right? Taking that, and it's very simple. It's, you know, you've got servers, co-locating storage with your compute, and then, you know, to further that journey, um, since Michael doesn't have you know, a ton of IT staff right, to, to manage this and build these things on their own, moving that model, it's the same architecture, but moving to an appliance model, right? So the hyper-converged appliances that we have, so HC250, HC380, so you get that same experience and that same architecture, but in something that's very easy to deploy, less than 15 minutes, right? You can scale that out, very intuitive user interface, and then you don't have to really deal with at a local office of patching servers, updating disk firmware, dealing with your SAN, right? It becomes all collapsed, very simple infrastructure. So that's kind of what we're doing right now with, with, with Software Defined. So, uh, Michael, you mentioned you were on a panel earlier this week. Uh, uh, panel is, is next, right after this. Oh, oh okay. So, uh, Patrick and I spoke um, about hyperconverged yesterday. Oh, okay. So what was, the, what was that conversation like? Share with us kind of uh, what you so guys discussed, any it, questions you might have had? Kind of, kind of our journey, uh, where we started uh, five, six years ago. Um, we needed to replace all of the physical servers in our remote locations. We, we don't have a lot of expertise in every remote location. We have some tier, uh, some first level support in those locations. Um, so we needed something that was a little bit more reliable than a, than a physical server that could die or a hard drive die and somebody has to go replace it. So we, we look for a high availability solution. Um, one of our partners uh, said, hey, have you ever looked at VSA? I said, no, I don't know anything about it. He's like, well, let me show you. So he said, take two physical servers, put this VSA software on it, and uh, you've got a cluster that you can, you know, you can fail over, you can upgrade uh, without any downtime. He said, okay, we like that. So let's, let's start deploying that. So we started deploying that with Gen 6 DL380s, um, kind of grew those, uh, increased uh, memory on those, disk, disk drives on those as, as the use case built out, um, and, and continued those through Gen 9s. So we, we, we even deployed some brand new systems last year that were dual Gen 9 DL380s. And, uh, and all the time we're looking for the next, next best thing, right? That, that gives us uh, more consolidated systems, because we don't have a lot of room. Uh, each one of these locations does not have data centers. Mm. They have a closet that they have a two post rack um, and that's really all the space. Some of them have, you know, a table. Right. So we're, we're putting servers on tables. Um, so we needed something that was a little more compact, but also had the high availability res resiliency. Uh, and our, uh, one of our storage guys from HPE came to us and said, have you heard about this hyperconverged thing? So, no, tell me about it. He said, well, we've got this HC242 system. And we looked at that and, and thought, it's not quite a fit for us, because they didn't have a lot of the, I guess what you would call special sauce built in yet. Um, and he said, well, hold off you know, for a little bit. We've got this new thing in the works, uh, HC250. So when that came out, they started talking to us about it, and we said, we like this. This is great. It gives us everything that we need in one package. We've got one software package to deal with. We've got one firmware package to update everything. It, it's all inclusive. Our, our guys in the remote locations don't really need to know anything about it. We can deploy it. It's invisible to them. It, it's invisible, right. And, and things just run. 
when you say it doesn't have, didn't have the secret sauce, you've been talking about the maturity of the stack, or is that? The maturity of the software. Yeah, okay. Um, the, the one view instant on piece and, and the management capabilities. Uh, the 242, you couldn't suck into your own vCenter, um, and you couldn't manage in one location. You had to manage each individually. So we waited for centralized management. Yeah, because you didn't have the resources out there. Right, to do we have that. we have two people. One of those is me, and one is one other guy yeah, yeah, yeah. that so works with me. To, so. the, the administrative assistant managing the servers. <laughs> <laughs> How do you back all this stuff up? Uh, we back everything up with Store Once and HP Data Protector, or excuse me, HPE Data Protector now. Yeah, let's, <laughs> the documentation documentation still says HP probably. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, haven't updated that yet. Okay, so we started that journey. Um, we had Barracuda appliances, mm -hmm. uh, and we've had those for five, six years, and uh, things just didn't quite fit for us. Their, their trickle out to the cloud did not, did not work well for us. Um, we never could figure out why. So we what wanted- was the issue, just the performance or the backup it, it window? It was a it performance. Wasn't um, a, a lot of those appliances weren't right sized for the locations, mm -hmm. um, so we ended up filling those up and, and having backup retention policies of two weeks. Or, or some of five days. Uh -huh. So we wanted to move to something that, that we used in the data center, which was HP Data Protector. So we, we use that in our um, data center for all of our systems aside from OpenVMS and iSeries that we have in there. So we wanted one stop shop for the entire organization so we could manage it holistically. So you had mentioned earlier that you're not responsible for the networking piece, but when you when you talk about, when you hear, you hear a lot about the hyper-converged, converged infrastructure, and storage networking and, and compute coming together. Do you see a day when that networking piece in, in, is all under one, one roof, uh, as well as the compute and the storage? Are you a small we, shop, so. We are investigating software-defined everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would say we're in our infancy on that, but our networking team is, is really on board with that. They, uh, they see the value in it, and, and they're fine with it. We have Virtual Connect now, so right. my team still manages some of the networking for blades and, and things of that nature. What's the appeal of that software-defined uh, vision, and what are your concerns about it? My concern is the size of our staff and all the back-end work to get that up and running. Um, the appeal to it is I think it will greatly simplify our disaster recovery and our ability to um, transition to an agile deployment for, for systems. Right, okay, so it's the learning curve of getting there. And then what, now what about Flash? Are you guys investing in Flash at all? Or? It's an interesting story. Um, three years ago, um, my director purchased a pure storage device. And uh, a month ago, I pulled, it out of this, I pulled it out of our infrastructure. Really, why? And we are migrate. I pulled it out because of the price. Uh, the price point for the performance that, that we needed for the application just, it didn't match. Um, but we, it was overkill. It, it was overkill. Um, but you, but you, you acquired the, the system, so you're going to use it somewhere else? Or, or? No, we're not. Um, our, our support runs out uh, early 2017, okay. so, so we're going to go ahead and retire it. It's already depreciated off of our books. Okay. Um, but we are going to introduce uh, some SSD uh, flash into our three-par array and take over that piece. Okay, and see how that goes and, right. and then evolve. Patrick, what else are you hearing at the show from, from customers? We're day three now, so you must have day a three. Good, good read on things. Um, you know, the, the, the HP split going well, the, the, the spin merge, you know, the nice tailwind, yep. the product portfolios cranking. You know, Antonio had, was here last night, had a spring in his step. <laughs> things feel pretty good. Yeah, things feel great. Um, I would say that we have a number of customers that are in transition to, um, you know, Michael has a, your traditional IT apps, right, that you're always going to have to keep up and running, you have to cost optimize them, and we're going to help them do that with, you know, things like upgrading his three-part all flash and, you know, and, and, and things like that. But the vision around automation and making things simpler uh, for customers is uh, that's becoming a reality here. So everyone, uh, software-defined storage is in slideware right now. We have people that are 
doing it at small scale. They're doing it in remote locations. They're doing it at remote offices, smaller data centers. We have people moving to hyperconverge, so that's at node scale. And they are absolutely doing that in the core data center. And then being able to take that same experience and the same software stack at rack scale on composable and synergy is, uh, that is, for me, that's super exciting. Because not only do you solve a bunch of problems around simplicity and cost, right? So we have this model of disaggregating servers from storage, appropriate for a lot of workloads today, like you know, obviously that's where you're going to run your Oracle on, right? A lot of other workloads that you can deploy on servers, right, with this stack and co-locate compute and storage together at a different price point, but be able to automate that is, I, I don't see anybody else that's going to be able to pull that off in the industry. We have the portfolio to do it, and, and that, that's what excites me about the portfolio today. You know, you hear a lot about digital transformation in every conference you go to, sort yep. of that, that meme is, you know, they hit you with that. Is, how, what does that mean to a business like yours? So, I, I would say for the last couple of years when you've heard that, for, for me it hasn't really resonated because we, we don't have a really agile uh, development cycle. Right. We, we, we stand up an application and it runs for years. Um, I've got some application teams that are asking for that, but, but we are feeding out a lot more information to mobile apps. And those those things change quite a bit. So, so the digital transformation for us is is trying to become more proactive to deliver that content to our employees, our customers, uh, our partners, and that's what it's going to mean to us. Service excellence. And, yeah. yeah. Great. Excellent. Well, we got to leave it there, um, gentlemen. Thanks so much for coming to the cube. Uh, quick last words. Your thoughts on 2016 Discover. 2016 Discover has been incredible. Um, I think for me, the, the market, and most importantly, our customers, have voted with their, their confidence in their business and, you know, and, and their dollars with HPE, especially on the storage side. So for me, that's been just a, a great realization of a strategy that we put into place you know, a number of years ago. So for me, it's just every presentation we give, every panel, every interview, we bring a customer along with us to tell the story not coming from me, coming from folks like Michael, so that's really important. And Charlie Parker or LP? Oof. <laughs> I'm a Coltrane guy, so. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael, your thoughts on, on the, the event here, your things you've learned, things that have excited you? Uh, I think it's been great. Uh, it's, it's, it's really good to see where HP, HPE is, is, is taking their business and, and, and steering customers, and, and they seem to be listening to what the needs are for, for their customers and, and being able to provide solutions for those. Great. All right. We're here live at theCUBE. Thanks very much, gentlemen, for, for coming on. You're at HPE Discover 2016. We'll be right back right after this short break. Yeah.